Maybe you have a need for speed. Or perhaps just like to take it slow. Or be a little wacky. From the pier to the beaches. The parks, the waters, the nightlife. There's good vibes in this artsy city by the bay. It's time for more cowbell. While for many years, St. Pete had been in the shadow of its bigger growing city across the bay, Tampa. Not so today. St. Pete has evolved into a top travel destination, as TripAdvisor just ranked it as the second top trending destination in the U.S. And for good reason, as you will certainly see in this video. It's going to be a little longer video, but there is so much to show. We'll start in Fort DeSoto a popular getaway for nature lovers. Then hop on a ferry to Egmont Key. We'll take you back to where St. Pete's tourism really started, at Sunken Gardens, one of Florida's first roadside attractions. In downtown, we'll show you the many gorgeous green spaces. North Shore Park, Vinoy Park, Straub Park, and Demons Landing. We'll take you on the pier, which is more than just the pier, showing you the nature, the restaurants, the art, and the entertainment. We'll hop on two more cruises, one out of Gulfport and one out of downtown, both traveling out to the Skyway Bridge at night. And we'll show all your other options for boat tours. We'll explore the dining along Beach Drive. Tag along with the Trolley Pub as we explore the Central Avenue District, the heart of the local food and drink scene, ending at the Dog Bar. We travel up the Pinellas Trail, take a stop inside the Trop to catch a Rays game, discuss the new ballpark that is coming, then further up the trail to Fairground St. Pete, a multi-sensory art exhibit of light will take you inside the Salvador Dali Museum and a live 360. Also the Florida Holocaust Museum will give tips on food and transportation. All this and more as we explore St. Pete, City of Good Vibes. We'll come back and show you the boat tours, the pier, and downtown in a bit. But for now, we head 13 miles to the southwest to one of Florida's best state parks, Fort DeSoto. While TripAdvisor lists this as the seventh best state park in Florida, I'd have to rank it third or fourth. It is huge, made up of five interconnected islands, the main island being Mullet Key with seven miles of waterfront, two fishing piers, and a seven mile out and back paved biking trail. The toll booth entering Fort DeSoto is no longer manned. You just pay $5 for parking at any of the kiosks located in the parking lots. There's a campground with full hookups, electricity, washers, dryers, modern restrooms. I put a link for camping info in the description below. Pets are allowed in the campground, and there is a dog park and a dog beach located west of the Bay Pier. There's the Arrowhead picnic and fishing area on the bay side of the island. The most popular beach is North Beach, with a large parking lot, clean restroom facilities, and a snack bar. Here, there's very shallow waters that allows you to walk out into the Gulf. On the other side of Bunce's Pass here is Shell Key, and beyond that, Paso Grill Beach that we showed last week in our St. Pete Beach video. Shell Key is only accessible by boat. At the southwest corner of Mollet Key is the Gulf Fishing Pier, 
There's cleaning stations and six shelters along the pier. Also, another snack bar. And there's the historic Fort Dade Battery, where you can see rifled mortars. And three quarters of a mile east of the Gulf Fishing Pier is the newly constructed $4.7 million Bay Pier that opened in late 2023, with a shelter in the middle part of the pier. And there's the Hubbard's Ferry coming in that we'll jump on in a bit. But we'll want to do some kayaking first. In the distance, the Skyway Bridge. And across the street from the Bay Pier parking lot is Topwater Kayak Outpost with kayak and paddleboard tours and rentals, as well as bicycle rentals. I like Topwater because Eric and Christy are here anytime between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. And they charge you when you return which is good because you often don't know how long you want to go out ahead of time. And they are dog friendly. They call this Manatee Cove because from March through the summer, you'll often find manatees here. It is $35 for up to two hours or $55 for up to four hours. Add $10 for a double kayak. All right, it's time to go back across the street and hop on the ferry to Egmont Key. Hey, how we doing? Good, good, good. By 1569, the Spanish came to explore. They found Egmont. We are on the ferry to Egmont Key, but they also have a ferry to Shell Key, as well as the dolphin cruise that departs out of Madeira Beach, 14 miles up the coast. The Egmont Key ferry is $45 for adults, $25 for children 11 and under. It's a 30 minute trip and you get three hours on the island and 30 minutes back. Makes for a four hour total trip. There is also the Pelican Boat Tour we'll show later that departs out of downtown that gives you two hours on Egmont Key. You are more likely to see dolphins and possibly manatees on this ferry. So they built this one to withstand all storms. It's finished in 1858, Robert E. Lee, was a part in designing it and it worked. It's still standing here today, makes it the oldest working structure here in Florida. Egmont Key is 1.6 miles from the tip of Fort DeSoto and the island itself is also 1.6 miles long. The southern tip of the island is a preserve which people are not permitted on. The waters on the Gulf side are incredible as this is some of the best areas in Tampa Bay for snorkeling and shelling. Okay, so they built Fort DeSoto back off to the right. Fort Dade out here on Egmont Key, which consisted of five gun batteries. Three of those you'll be able to explore today. You don't, however, want to swim on the northern tip, as this is the main passageway for ships coming into Tampa, and the rip currents can be severe. On Egmont Key, there are no restrooms, nor any Dunkin' Donuts. In fact, no food outlets at all. So make sure to bring water and snacks with you. Only service dogs are allowed on the island. You will find lots of wildlife, especially gopher tortoises. If you live locally, I'd recommend to get involved with the Egmont Key Alliance. They help to preserve and protect its wildlife, like sea turtle nestings, and restore historic artifacts so that people can keep coming and enjoying Egmont Key. You can make a donation or become a member for as little as $25 a year. I put a link below. We now head south of downtown to 4th Street North, which is a main north to south thoroughfare. While it's seen many changes over the years, one of Florida's original roadside attractions still sits here today. Sunken Gardens opened in 1936. Once a waterlogged sinkhole where wild hogs roam, thus the name Sunken. George Turner turned it into a nature-filled paradise with tropical palms, orchids, parrots, and waterfalls. He would charge visitors 15 cents. In the 1960s, George, with his son, drove to Miami to pick up flamingos and brought them back to the gardens in his station wagon. Some of the descendants of those first flamingos here. The gardens flourished for 20 years, but in the mid-80s, attendance began to dwindle as the larger Florida theme parks were replacing the smaller attractions. 
The Turner grandsons decided to sell it in 1989, and for a decade its future was uncertain. Until the city of St. Petersburg bought it in 1999 when its citizens approved a one-time property tax. Today, Sunken Gardens remains one of St. Pete's most popular attractions. It is $15 for adults and $6 for children 2 through 12. You can walk the meandering paths under a canopy of live oak trees through more than a thousand tropical plants and flowers with butterflies, cascading waterfalls, streams filled with Japanese fish, and a colorful array of tropical birds. Like Mindy here, a 30-year-old white cockatoo. Hi, Just east of Sunken Gardens is the neighborhood of Snell Isle, home of the Vinoy Golf Club, part of the Renaissance Vinoy in downtown St. Pete. We make our way to St. Pete's waterfront along Coffee Pot Boulevard here. It is here you have a very nice scenic sidewalk that goes on for over two and a half miles through the waterfront of St. Petersburg and past the pier to the Dally Museum. It passes several parks beginning with North Shore Park as Coffee Pot Boulevard becomes North Shore Drive. There's a dog park here with a large parking lot, a separated fence for small and large dogs. A male dog getting a little frisky there. Bailey says, not so fast. After North Shore Park is Vinoy Park, only the name changes, but it's really one continuous long green space area. The St. Pete Pier starts to come into view. As Bayshore Drive makes the turn into 5th Avenue Northeast, on the left, the North Yacht Basin with the Vinoy Marina, and in the distance, the St. Pete Skyline. And on the right, the Vinoy Resort Autograph Collection Hotel. The Birchwood Canopy, a rooftop bar and lounge at the top of the Birchwood Hotel. Going to go down Beach Drive here just so you can see it in the daytime. We'll come back here at night when the street really comes to life with all the street side dining and bars. On the other side of Beach Drive is the Museum of Fine Arts with year-round rotating exhibits. It is $22 for adults and $12 for youth 7 to 17. Kids 6 and under are free. The museum is located in North Straub Park. This park has some super amazing trees. Nice for a walk after a meal across the street. This is where Tampa and St. Pete differ. While Tampa has a colorful river walk, St. Pete has really a more open, walkable green space waterfront area. Speaking of Tampa, this is where you used to be able to board the Cross Bay Ferry. But now the dock is way on the other side of the airport due to some new federal regulation. It's a mile away from the pier, a real bummer. In a restricted area, it is $12 each way for the 40 minute trip across the bay. To save a little walking from the pier to the Cross Bay Ferry, you can take the PSTA downtown looper for free. And the Sunrunner that goes to St. Pete Beach as well is building a new station near the pier. Continuing on Bayshore Drive as we arrive at the pier, let's show you the boat tours. The pier separates the North Yacht Basin that we just drove around with the Central Yacht Basin. And Demons Landing separates the Central Yacht Basin with the South Yacht Basin. Most of your boat tours are here at the Central Yacht Basin. At the corner where the pier begins is Fresco's Waterfront Bistro with a deck right on the water at the marina, very close to the boat tours. And there's public restrooms across the street at the entrance to the pier. From Frescoes, we travel up 2nd Avenue Northeast, on the right, the Central Yacht Basin. The first boat tour is Pier Dolphin Cruises. This is a great way to see the pier from the water, as well as the dolphins and other wildlife. A 90-minute tour is $44 for adults, $19 for children, 4 to 17. Toddlers, 3 and under, $10. They also have a sunset cruise for $4 more. There's Tampa Bay Watch Eco Tour that is $26 for adults, $18 for children 13 and under. 
for a 90 minute cruise. Tampa Bay Watch also has a mini discovery center on the pier that you can explore. And for a small group, there's the St. Pete Boat Tour, where you can charter a sunset cruise for up to six people for $280. And there's Totally Tiki Tours, where you can charter a cruise for up to six people for $354. They also provide coolers with ice, complimentary water, and chips. For a smaller floating tiki, there's Cruising Tiki St. Pete. You can rent jet skis with Bada Bing Water Sports. And there's Tampa Bay Sunset Sail that departs from Demons Landing, where you can sail aboard a 47-foot sailboat for a two-hour sunset cruise. It's $100 per person. We'll take you on the two most popular boat tours in a bit, but first, let's show you the pier. This pier opened up in 2020, replacing the former inverted pyramid pier. At the time, many were not crazy about the design, including myself. But what I and a lot of people failed to see was that this was much more than just a typical pier, where all the activity is at the end of the pier. But this was 26 acres of green space, all spread out, filled with activities, eateries, attractions, and entertainment. Because it's so spread out, it never feels too crowded. Now a few years old, you have to say the design has been a huge success. Just a great place to hang out and watch the Pelicans, which is the official mascot and logo of St. Petersburg. The pier extends a half mile in the bay from Bayshore Drive. There's a free tram that runs every 10 minutes. As for the eateries, at the end of the pier, there's the Driftwood Cafe, offering ice cream and snacks. On the fourth floor is the Teak Restaurant, an indoor casual dining restaurant, with large floor-to-ceiling windows facing the skyline. And at the top, on the fifth floor, is Pier Tiki, an open-air bar and lounge, with comfortable seating overlooking the pier and skyline on one side, and the bay on the other side. You can reserve these super comfortable tiki huts that seats up to six guests. On the south side of the pier is Doc Ford's Rum Bar and Grill. You can dine while watching the boats coming in and out of the central yacht basin. This is also located near the parking lot to the pier. And near the monument to the first commercial passenger airline flight that happened from St. Pete to Tampa on New Year's Day in 1914. And for something quick, in the middle of the pier is the Spa Beach Bistro with a full bar. They have a variety of pizzas you can order. I'm enjoying mine in one of the many Adirondack chairs located around the pier. Spa Beach is a little beach area on the north side of the pier. You can launch kayaks and paddle boards from here. Also next to Spa Beach Bistro is the Bending Arc, a netted sculpture created by Janet Eckelman, which you have to see at night as it lights up and changes colors and is perpetually in motion, created by 180 miles of twine and more than 1.5 million knots. And there's a variety of seasonal entertainment and activities, like this is the Rock and Roller Rink that is set up usually in March and April. There's Winter Beach from mid-November to mid-January that includes an ice skating rink. Just plenty to do at the pier. All right, it's time to get back out on the water. Any visit to St. Pete has to include a boat tour to the Skyway Bridge at night. The Skyway, as well as being a recreational area with the old bridge used as fishing piers, connects St. Petersburg with Manatee County, Bradenton. It crosses the shipping channel to the port of Tampa. All the big cruise ships pass under it heading out to Mexico, the Caribbean, or even the Bahamas that we just did a video of a month ago. There are two main boat tours to the Skyway, one that goes out of downtown, the Pelican, and one that goes out of Gulfport, St. Pete Coastal Cruises. Downtown Gulfport is located six miles southwest of downtown St. Pete. It's a nice little sleepy beach town to check out, by the way, with a really good long fishing pier, Old Maddie's Bar and Grill on the corner here, among some of the outdoor eateries and lots of quaint bed and breakfast type lodging. St. Pete Coastal Cruises departs a couple of miles from downtown Gulfport. 
That's the Pinellas Bayway in the distance, leading to St. Pete Beach in the upper right, and beyond that, Tierra Verde. This cruise is a three-hour cruise that is $80 for adults and $30 for children, 3 to 12. It travels down Boca Ciega Bay on a 50-foot catamaran. And you probably see a little more scenery on here than you do going out of downtown St. Pete. They also have dolphin watching and booze cruises that are about $20 cheaper. We pass by Tierra Verde, which is great for windsurfing. This tour makes a stop at Outback Key for sunset. Now the Pelican is a two hour out and back cruise to the Skyway. This cruise is $59 for adults and $39 for children 12 and under. You do get nice views of downtown St. Pete and sunset over Tampa Bay in I-75 as it leads to the Skyway. As for the view of the bridge at night, I like coastal cruises better due to the angle it approaches the bridge. You see the whole length of the bridge as you get closer and closer. And it seems to arrive at the bridge later in the evening than the Pelican did, making the lights more impressive. When the Pelican arrived, it wasn't completely dark yet, and therefore the lights from the bridge didn't stand out as much. And with coastal cruises being a smaller vessel, as well as going under the middle of the bridge, it can go under this part of the bridge. Further down, where there are double pylons, you see the tunnel effect underneath the bridge. This is so cool. The larger Pelican vessel only goes under the middle of the bridge. Now coming back into downtown, you do get a nice view of the night skyline of St. Pete on the Pelican. So you can pick the boat tour based upon what you would like to see. All right, let's go back and check out Beach Avenue now that it's nighttime. When the sun goes down, Straw Park lights up and Beach Avenue really comes to life with several restaurants and lounges with sidewalk seating and live musicians like Mario the Sugar Sacks playing here at Alelo Wine Bar. Alelo serves Mediterranean cuisine and next door, Pasiugo for fine gelato and coffee. There's Ceviche, a tapas bar and restaurant. The Park Shore Grill with steaks and seafood and fine wines. The Trist Gastro Lounge with a long marble bar and a Victorian accented loungy space. Flute and Drum, a caviar, champagne and whiskey bar with live music. The Stillwaters Tavern. And Bella Brava, a casual Italian restaurant. And there's Cigar Paradise with a boutique luxury lounge with craft cocktails and hand-rolled cigars. I'm having an ice cream at Kilwins after a long day of filming. Continuing from the pier to Demons Landing on Beach Drive, on the right, South Straw Park. So much great green space area. It's why St. Pete has so many great festivals. Among them are the Seafood and Music Festival in February, the Barbecue and Jazz Festival in June, the Super Greek Festival in October, the Run Fest in November, and the biggest is the St. Petersburg Firestone Grand Prix in early March, which is the first race of the season for the NTT Indy Race Series. 27 cars zip along a 1.8 mile course that runs along the streets of downtown, past the Dolly Museum, and around the South Yacht Basin, onto an actual runway of Albert Wooded Airport. The main race happens on Sunday, but there's qualifying and other races throughout the weekend. Even if you don't go to the race, it's a great time to visit downtown 
Yes, might be a little more crowded than normal, but you hear the sounds of the engines racing all along the waterfront area. Another popular event are the sailboat regattas put on by the St. Petersburg Yacht Club. The sailing center is right here in Demons Landing Park. This is another great area to hang out. There's this little elevated area with benches that is a great place to watch the planes landing and taking off from Albert Wooded Airport. Also benches along the edge of the landing here. Tampa Bay Sunset Sail mentioned earlier is here, as well as the boat ramp for launching kayaks. Across the street from Demons Landing Park is Al Lang Stadium, home of the Tampa Bay Rowdy soccer team. And next to that is the Mahaffey Theater, a performing arts and concert venue. And next to that is the Dally Museum. With a collection of works of artist Salvador Dali, with everything from melting clocks to visual illusions, there are guided tours. It is $29 for adults, $12 for youth 6 to 12, children 5 and under free. You can add on the Alive 360 for $15. This is an immersive digital experience of light and sound that lasts for 40 minutes. There's large scale images that move along the walls and floor, almost to the ceiling. I would recommend to sit along the wall and not in the center. By doing that, it allows you to see three sides easier without having to move your head too much. Devon's Landing is also the south end of the Pinellas Trail, which is a 45-mile paved trail that runs the length of Pinellas County. The trail begins alongside of 1st Avenue South with a dedicated lane. We pass by the park and rec, a cool bar with pinball, arcade, pool tables, and outdoor games. Some of the best parts we showed in our Dunedin and Tarpon Springs videos. A shot of the legendary Bella. Certainly one of the best assets of Pinellas County. We take it to what is called the Gas Plant District, named due to the two huge fuel tanks that once were here in the 80s. Replaced by Tropicana Field, which was built to bring a Major League Baseball team to St. Pete, the Tampa Bay Rays. I got a prime seat here, I'm right on the field. Well, I'm on the field in four years from now. For you see, that is where they're playing right now. But four years from now, they're going to be playing right here. Tropicana Field was built in the 80s and today is still among the top 29 Major League Baseball facilities. Well, maybe not so great considering there's only 30 stadiums. But the Trop is better than Oakland Stadium. And it does have cowbells. Therefore, the owners have proposed a new $1.3 billion ballpark to open for the 2028 season. The city would pay $417 million, Pinellas County would pay $312 million, and the Rays $600 million. It will be part of a $6.5 billion redevelopment that will include housing, retail space, a hotel, and a black history museum, and more. Actually, all joking aside, I don't think Tropicana Field is as bad as what people say. It does, however, get criticized for its catwalks at the top of the dome, which were not built high enough, so therefore batted balls have hit them and dropped back down into the field of play. Regardless, the Rays have put a really good team on the field, dominating the division in the last few years, hosting four World Series games and several playoff games. Hopefully the new stadium will have a touch tank of manta rays like Tropicana Field has. Manta rays, also known as Devil Rays, which was the original name of the team. On this day, DJ Kitty, Raymond the mascot, and the rest of the Rays fans would go home happy as the Rays overcame a two-run deficit in the ninth inning with a walk-off win.
From the trop, there's a tunnel that leads to Ferg Sports Bar, a massive open-air bar and grill that covers two city blocks with over 90 TVs. They also have a clubhouse golf simulator like Top Golf. The Central Avenue District runs from Bayshore Drive at the waterfront to about two miles to 25th Street. Here, there is a wide variety of eateries, bars, and shops with a fresh, funky, artsy vibe. The Imagine Museum with contemporary glass art. There's the Bonu Italian Tavern. The Chris Lip Cafe for fine coffees and baked items. Situated in an art gallery building. Cafes with sidewalk seating under gorgeous oak trees. Just a nice vibe. Really something for everyone on Central. Further down Central, you can practice your lumberjack skills at the Hatchet Hangout Sports Club. It's $50 for one person or $90 for a group of two. $15 discount if you book online. Maybe the best way to explore the Central Avenue District is on a St. Pete Trolley Pub. The tours start out at the Three Daughters Brewing, a sizable tasting room offering craft brews, games, and live music with a large stage, providing an upbeat atmosphere. The Trolley Pub is $39 for a seat on a public mixer two-hour tour, or you can charter the whole trolley for $376 for a private tour for 6 to 15 people, like a bachelorette party. You can either bring your own drinks or buy them on the trolley or pick up drinks along the route as it makes stops at about four bars or breweries. Our first stop, Tap House 61. Even if a single or a couple, it's fun to do these because you get to talk to other people and over the course of a couple of hours, start to kind of get to know each other a little. Our second stop, the Lost and Found, a vintage cocktail hour, bar, and lounge. You can decide where you want the stops to be. Bailey is too young to drink, but she was enjoying chasing the trolleys. Our third stop, the Salty Nun, with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A nice little courtyard with a swing out front. In our last stop, Bailey's favorite bar, the Dog Bar. There's a $7 fee for your dog. This bar has a nice off-leash area for the dogs to mix it up. There's a pup pool and an ice bath. And out front, there's the Tower 10 Burger food truck, where you can get a delicious burger and fries for about $15. About a mile west of Tropicana Field, located in the Warehouse District, is Fairgrounds St. Pete. Not a fairgrounds as in carnival rides, but this is a multi-sensory immersive exhibit using light, celebrating the weird, wacky, and wonderful Florida. It is $27 for adults, $22 for children, 4 to 12, open every day except Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's a conglomeration of over 70 different artists. And next door are the artist studios, known as the factory, where you can see and purchase artwork. With all these fun times we can have, it is good not to take for granted the freedoms we enjoy, but to take moments to pray for and remember those who are suffering and those who have sacrificed in the past. And a good place you can do that is at the Florida Holocaust Museum. It makes you realize that some of the things we suffer are very minor compared to what others have had to deal with. These people all had dreams, lives just like you and me, but were brutally cut short. Sure makes you appreciate freedom. It is $20 for adults and $10 for children, seven to 17. Six and under are free. Was good running into a subscriber, Lance Hare, at the museum. As well as Kelly and Ethan Hare. Hey,
It was you and your dog. If you ever see us out and about, make sure to say hi. Hi, Oliver. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. You know, I think isolation is a big problem in our society. Therefore, it's good to get out, to be around people, to get some sun, and to enjoy nature. Maybe hop on a trolley pup. That is what is so great about St. Pete. It gives us opportunities to enjoy the sunshine, the nature, and the people interaction. When you get away from the negative news and meet new people, you realize we all have much more in common than the differences we have, regardless of race, sex, or politics. Don't let the talking heads on cable TV divide you. For the stranger you run into is probably dealing with some of the same issues you are. When you get out of yourself, you realize you are not alone. In the comments below, let us know your thoughts on St. Petersburg. Also, let us know some of the places you would like to see a video of. We'll be doing a Florida Dreams version of the St. Pete and St. Pete Beach videos. That is an all narrated extended long version where you hear more of the sounds of nature and see more of the footage not shown in these videos. If traveling with a dog, I'd recommend these Kurgo dog backpacks. Makes it so convenient to bring your dog just about anywhere. I put a link below. We are Tampa Aerial Media. We film travel promos across the USA for stock footage, or if you'd like to hire us to film your city, region, or resort, contact us at info at tampaaerialmedia.com. Next, we go a little ways up the Gulf Coast to Clearwater Beach. From the west coast of Florida, I wish blessings to you wherever you may be.